Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas at Amazon Web Services reInvent Conference. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. And our fourth year, now hitting the cloud, we got storage, big data, cloud, next will be mobile. We'll hit these markets one at a time. And it's always great to have uh, alumni come on, CUBE alumni. Martin Mikos, who's the CEO of Eucalyptic Systems. Welcome back to the CUBE, my co-host on this segment. is Stu Miniman from Wikibon. Uh, welcome back to the CUBE, and you got a Thank prop you. to show us, so uh, welcome back. Thank you. It's not a prop, this is a functioning private cloud, <laughs> an AWS compatible cloud in a backpack. 12 core uh, power, 20 gigs of storage, battery power for 10 hours. So when we talk about private clouds, this is what you can do today. So we got to get so make this sure. is cloud mobility then, right? This is, yes. Mobile and cloud are the big new trends, so we combine them. We got to get a picture of this. I want to get, get a yeah, picture of this. We have, we, have a private, we have a private cloud on yes. the cube. Yeah. That's a record, so. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I love that. Yeah, yeah, this is good, this is good. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so obviously Compaq, so t take us through that. What's going on with that? So tell us, tell us about the product. So when you build private clouds, it's very important that they are easy to use and easy to operate. And we show that by building it into a uh, backpack so that we, you can operate a cloud without any sysadmin, with no extra work, no extra labor. You have everything in here. It's very compact, very easy to use. So, so, so Martin, uh, you know, at Amazon, of course, is you know the big leader in public cloud, uh, and right. it was kind of interesting. We saw Andy this morning, you know, kind of bash a little bit on private cloud and talked about here's yes. all the benefits of public cloud, here's private cloud, but then when he walked through the use cases, hybrid cloud is two of the six. Correct. Uh, and, and you guys have been working with Amazon for, for a long time. So can you give yeah. us the update, your take on what you're seeing about that public versus private dynamic? Uh, every economic system has shown that over time you have a, a division between owning and renting. And we don't know yet, yet where the percentages will fall, but we do know that there will always be on-prem computing, always be public computing. And what we make sure is that we have the same API on-premise as you have in the public cloud, and that's why we are AWS compatible. Okay, so do you have any, any metrics or decision points that you help customers to decide what goes on-prem versus off-prem? Because, once again, Andy this morning talked about the traditional players think that three quarters of the business is going to stay on-prem, but Amazon thinks it's more like 10% is going to stay on-prem. Uh, you know, where do you see that, and how do you help customers uh, justify when to put something on-prem versus off-prem? It's, it's easier than that. You start using AWS, you start using eucalyptus, you have both, and you grow them to the degree it makes sense. But you don't have to know the answer up front because it's impossible to know. You have different reasons for going to the public cloud and going on-prem. Data gravity, control, compliance, performance, cost, margins, many things that affect it. And if you think you know ahead of time, then you're probably wrong. But it's very easy to get going both on-prem with eucalyptus and on the public cloud with AWS and because the API is the same, you can move workloads at any point between the two. So talk about the company um, positioning now. You guys have been in the business for a long time. Um, what's changed right now? What are you guys focusing in obviously Private Clouds One here and they're actually demonstrating it live here? Um, what's what's, the, what's the, the, the positioning right now for your company? Share with the folks where you've <laughs> come from and where you are right now. Right, we've always had the same positioning for this company, we believe that that public cloud is innovating a new way of computing. AWS is the dominant player there. We are enabling that same power on premise, inside your firewall, on your own servers. So that's why we're building an open source, AWS compatible cloud platform. And that ultimately addresses the, the big thing that we talk about in the queue, certainly on the enterprise side, the lock-in feature. People are kind of nervous. They think, okay, we, they like it. We have a lot of people saying Amazon's great, and it is good. We use it for our, some of our app development, but the enter large enterprises don't want lock-in. So when, when you hear that term kicked around, some are using it as a FUD with Amazon. How do, how do you talk to customers and saying, what is lock-in? Is it the data, is it the applications? It's kind of a moving train, lock-in, that term. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on, on lock-in? Obviously open source helps everything there, but in general, how, how do you talk to the enterprises about lock-in? I think we provide the ultimate relief from lock-in because we're using the industry standard API that anybody can use. We deliver all our software as open source code so anybody can use it, they don't have to be our customers. I don't know how you can go further on the line of reducing lock-in. So people can use the same API, they don't have to be customers of ours, it's fine if they are, but they have no locking into the 
to us or to any vendor when they use Eucalyptus. Yeah, so, so Martin, uh, you know, if you talk about kind of application mobility, you can do public cloud, yeah. you can do private cloud. Right. One of the things I found interesting, you're also, I, from what I've talked to some of your folks about, you're yeah. helping a lot of customers that are moving from VMware to KVM. Can you talk a little bit about that dynamic and what you're seeing? True, so when we talk about lock-in, of course, VMware is a company that people are very much locked into. And if they deploy a Eucalyptus cloud, we can support the existing VMware environment and we can support KVM. And you can start moving workloads and you can even move machines from one to the other. So we allow people to have the flexibility to decide exactly how much VMware environment they have and how much they have open source, non-lock-in environment. Yeah, I, I, you know, I guess poking at that a little, little bit. I yeah. mean, you know, VMware, yeah. uh, you know, you say they're lock-in. It's, it's really, you know, there, there's licenses. They have workloads. I mean, they're not doing anything special to the workloads. It's not like I have to, you know, recreate my workload to work on VMware. It's comfortable for most of the, uh, you know, enterprise customers. Uh, you know, they like VMware and what they're right. doing. Uh, yeah. Is it really a cost play that you're doing? Are, you, are customers really saying I'm locked into VMware? Or is it a cost savings that's helping them uh, to move there? So if we start from where we are today, VMware has an amazing set of products and people are very happy with that for traditional enterprise workloads and they may never move. What we are enabling uh, customers to do is move from there into the cloud world and run cloud workloads on the public cloud and on the private cloud and without being beholden to a VMware or anybody else. Okay. So I got to ask you about some questions we had on our crowd chat from yeah. uh, Caroline. She says, uh, and I want to get your perspective on this. Anyone talking about, this is the question, anyone talking about AWS reInvent about getting data back from AWS, should I want to leave the service? So, um, what's your perspective on that? Is the data, how does the data model fit? Is that something that you've heard about? You know, can you talk about that? Is that uh, something that you, you can address with that question? Well, I think data will always be vital for all IT environments, and where you put it uh, determines what you end up doing with it. So you put data on the public cloud if you're fine keeping it there, you keep it on premise if that's important to you, and then you let compute power go close to the data. So you have what we call data gravity. If you have the data in one place and you're wondering whether you should remove it, then maybe you should if it's a worry for you. Uh, but you can always move it back again. So moving in, okay, so that's, that's fair. So also the other top conversation we've been hearing I want to get your perspective on is security. Uh, you've, you've seen, and this has been some good sessions here on security. What's your take on the state of security relative to the cloud from your, your view? You've seen, you've seen this movie from the beginning and living it right now right. on the cutting edge. Where are we with security? Well, first of all, I would say it's a very real concern for people to have, so they should be focused on, on security, and I, that's a, a good behavior among customers. But I do believe that we have already achieved a high level of security, generally speaking, in cloud offerings. So we don't believe that one or the other environment is more or less secure. All of them are secure. And the security breaches that anybody has are typically originating in human beings and many times in the human beings who are inside your own organization. So it means that, that security at the end of the day is about discipline and having an organization that behaves well. Yeah, you know, you know, Martin, uh, you know, we, when you talk about kind of lock-in and data yeah. portability, right. mm -hmm. a lot of people have said that, you know, Amazon's a lock-in. So, you know, Amazon's not open source. They, you know, they might have the APIs that are pretty much standard for the industry, right. but, you know, right now you're focused solely on AWS. Are you looking at other clouds that you could, you know, connect with via your APIs, or, you know, is it an Amazon world, Amazon take all, in your opinion? Well, we, our mission is to make sure that there's an on-premise environment that can connect with the leading public clouds. Today there's just Amazon and nobody else is leading. When the day comes that somebody else becomes a leading public cloud provider, yes, we will support such an API. But right now we have our hands full serving customers who run on Amazon and Eucalyptus. We believe we will do it for forever probably. So it's not like it's changing there. But there could be some other vendor becoming the second uh, big public cloud vendor and we would then support uh, their API. Okay, so, so let's spitball on that a little bit. So, yep. you know, it'd be easy if, say, Google GCE or you know, Microsoft Azure step up and, and really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Amazon. 
But you know, what's your take on OpenStack? Because you know, there's a whole uh, you know ecosystem building up for OpenStack, um, and OpenStack, you know, you guys have your tagline as kind of open source, uh, you know, a right. a AWS. So it would seem that OpenStack might be a good fit for what you're doing. How, what, what's your take? Um, I think OpenStack has a very different philosophy from ours. We focus on being the best, bringing the power of the cloud into your own environment, being the best complement to the public clouds. OpenStack is trying to define a new API. Mm -hmm. OpenStack is trying to compete with Amazon. We do neither of those. Uh, and OpenStack has, based on who, on the vendors who participate, is a project that is everything for everybody. They're embracing every feature, every new uh, project, every new roadmap direction you could take. That's not us. We're focused on one thing that we do very, very well. And therefore, I. It's fun to compare OpenStack and Eucalyptus and CloudStack, but at the end of the day, the differences in philosophy will take us to different parts in the market. And I think we've found our market, which grows very fast, is very attractive to us, and we don't really mind what happens elsewhere. You're laser focused on your plan, which is open source to the enterprises who want Amazon-like functionality on-premise. That's Correct. pretty much and who want a cloud that really works, yeah. that doesn't require a whole army to keep it up and running. Yeah, yeah so you, you basically interface into Amazon. Correct. Effectively, yep. and allow these guys to build their own clouds. Pretty yes. much, like that. We do that. <laughs> we have it in the backpack. <laughs> what else do you see? I got Since you're up here, because you're <laughs> such a luminary and open source veteran, I got to ask you the open source vision. It's a little bit off, off subject than, of, than, than the private cloud is. Open, open source is growing and it's so mature now. We just, you know, it's just so awesome to see it grow so great. Yeah. What, 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 what's the next evolution in open source? What do you, how do you see these communities and projects growing? What's the, what's the next gen of open source look like? What's that next 20 mile uh, journey in the open source communities? I mean, obviously everyone knows it's table stakes, but you're starting to see you know, people play in open source, still have their differentiated software product. Right. And you got the pure open source players like say Hortonworks. Um, and you're an investor in Cloudera. That's just one small example in the Apache stuff, but in yeah. general, what's your vision of open source? And is it going in the right direction or not? Or what's your take on that? I, I think it is going <laughs> in the right direction. I think open source has shown that it's a superior way of developing and deploying software, and over time it produces more secure, more stable software than any other method. Uh, the difference we are now seeing is that if I compare back to 10 years ago when I ran my SQL, uh, it was all about the source code back then. I believe now it's mostly about the APIs. The source code better be open, but it's also about uh, the APIs so that you can combine different parts of the software stack. We used to have just one database inside an application. Today in a website you have MySQL, MongoDB, uh, Hadoop, uh, you can have another Cassandra, a few other databases in one single application and dealing with the APIs there is becoming as important as dealing with the source code. It's, in its essence, it's systems programming at large scales. These new applications are dealing with multiple issues. I can use Mongo for this, I use Hadoop for that, I use HBase here. So there's a variety of different programming techniques. So that, is that what you're kind of saying, is that there's no one use case anymore, it's more uh, kind of buffet of open source code? Sort you know? of, but I meant that when we had the attention on the source code. Now yeah. you must have attention on integrating software. And we talk about continuous integration, continuous okay. delivery. And the method of producing great software is changing. And that's why you have companies like GitHub and Atlassian who are serving this new group of developers who develop on the agile method very quickly. They combine products very quickly and things therefore move faster. Even though the human brain moves no faster than 50,000 years ago but software development still moves faster. So that's an accomplishment, that our fingers can produce code faster, although our brains are the same old slow that we've always had. Well, you know, a thousand ants can move a mountain, right? So, uh, yeah. so, so I asked a young developer, and a comment was funny, because you know, I'm, you know, I'm in my late 40s, so I remember the, the, the early days of downloading patches. He goes, why, why would anyone want to like, load like Linux? Like, what? So like, his, like, his whole mindset was like, load software. Right. What? Yeah. I mean, what? Yes. <laughs> so that's the, that's the software stack. So that's changing the game. The engines Completely. are moving. And are they going in the right direction? Does that create, how do you have that kind of philosophy of integrated stacks without lock-in? What's, is it a balance? This is a balance. At some point you need functionality. 
Well, let's be clear on lock-in. Every leading company becomes greedy and will drive for lock-in. There's nobody that can avoid it. Yeah. Greed infests every successful business, and it's sort of, it's part of the game. Yeah. So to really have- They uh, call it differentiation. Uh, right, <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah. But to really have avoidance of lock-in, you must stick to open source, open APIs, and open data. Then you have complete avoidance, but not many are ready to commit to it. Awesome. But look at those three, source code, APIs, and data, and make them open, and you have no lock-in. So open source is not about free, it's about freedom, as uh, was said on theCUBE once. Uh, so let's yes. step back down to the private cloud. So what needs to happen for you guys to be successful? Obviously the backpack of the private cloud here is amazing. What, what's going to be your driver right now in the, in I the think, enterprise? I think Eucalyptus is very successful, but of course we, yeah, uh, yeah. we strive for world domination. <laughs> and we have built an amazing product that now can serve anybody who needs an AWS compatible cloud. It's interesting, you're, in your history you've been successful, it's like repeating, it's like you're now on your third leg of the journey, right, early, early days. Uh, let's right. not go there, but I have been <laughs> unsuccessful as well. <laughs> hey, you can't win back-to-back -back championships every year. Right, um, yes. Stu, did you have a question? So uh, I was just building on the ecosystem. You said yeah. the board of directors of a couple of companies. You know, we're here at AWS. You know, what do you see as kind of the big opportunities for startups? You know, is, is would you recommend that you know everybody be all in on Amazon? Uh, you know, we talked about open source. You know, what advice are you giving to you know entrepreneurs in this space? Well, I would start by saying that the best entrepreneurs don't listen uh, to advice from people like me. They just do. Uh, but I, I do believe that the, the new way of developing and deploying software is changing the world and building tools and mechanisms for it. Like, take Code Envy, a really innovative startup that provides you a development environment online. That's an example of a very creative way of approaching a very old problem in a new way. Okay. Great. Martin, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. We wish you the best of continued success with the private cloud. Again, a record for theCUBE. We have a functional private cloud yes. actually on theCUBE. <laughs> great uh, great uh, innovation, innovation there. Uh, you're a legend, open source legend. And again, thanks for your perspective. Appreciate you coming on, taking the time. We are live in Las Vegas on the ground floor, show floor of Amazon uh, reInvent conference. Uh, all developers, all cloud. A lot of great action here. Stay with us for our next guest after this short break.